The trade relationship between Canada and the United States of America is vitally important to both nations. However, there is now escalating tension over NAFTA. Is this tension in the best interest of Canadians? Let's talk to Mr. Garnet Janis. He is the Deputy Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs representing the Conservative Party of Canada. Please join me in welcoming him to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Molly. Great to be with you today. All right. So can Canada afford to lose our largest trading partner? Our trading relationship with the United States is vital for our economic interests. Our partnership with the United States is critically important in so many other areas, security, uh, other forms of, of cooperation. Uh, it's vital for us. It's also vital for the United States. Uh, the United States benefits from a strong trading relationship with Canada as well. And uh, that's why it was a, a PC government that signed NAFTA originally, uh, and, and that's why as the Conservative opposition, we want to work collaboratively with the government as much as possible uh, on trying to advance Canada's interests and ensure that we get a conclusion to these negotiations. We think that uh, some, some mistakes have been made, but at the same time, uh, you know, we, we want to see Canada succeed in these negotiations. Uh, it, there's been a lot of discussion about diversification, and we can talk about that. The, uh, the need to be thinking about other trading partners as well. That's all true, uh, but that doesn't replace the importance of trade with the United States. We're not going to be able to just flip a switch and trade with someone else. We only, we only have one land neighbor, right? And, uh, and that, that obviously uh, has, has big implications for us. That's right, and also it's so much easier to trade with the United States mm -hmm. as opposed to any other country, mm -hmm. right? We share the same language, same culture, yeah. and, you know, trucks can take goods from Canada easily over to the United States. Yeah. And uh, so I think this is a really good relationship, and I think it's really important for all parties to work together mm -hmm. uh, to make this happen. Most economists say deficits and surpluses don't really matter because companies trade, not countries. Do you agree with that? Well, I think just, just to be clear in that context, we're talking about uh, trade deficits, opposed to fiscal deficits, right? Mm -hmm. uh, fiscal deficits matter a lot. Whether the, if the government is spending more than it's taking in, that's a big problem. Um, the question of trade deficits, it's a calculation of uh, imports versus exports. And uh, I guess the, the logic of those that are, that are very worried about trade deficits could come out of a, really a, a different way of thinking about economics, that it's all about getting more exports relative to, uh, to, to imports. But I think what we found in general is that uh, what's, what's actually worked is having, uh, as you talked about, a, a free economy, a, mm -hmm. a free trade system uh, where people can buy things they want, sell things they want across the borders. And uh, in some cases, that's going to mean selling a little more than you're buying. In some cases, you're, that's going to mean buying a little more than you're selling, and that's going to be offset by um, by other kinds of uh, of, of cross border investment. Um, so I, that's I mean I, th I think that's a, a a better way of looking at it. Some of the rhetoric we see um, from from people in the United States, but also from people in, in Canada, always wants to see trade as kind of a, a competitive thing. Are we getting more out of it, or is the U.S. getting more out of it? Who's winning and who's losing? Uh, but I always I find that odd. It's like saying, when I go to the grocery store, am I winning or is the grocery store winning? But it's not a competition, right? I'm, I'm buying groceries. I'm getting something I need. Uh, they're getting something they need, which is they're operating a business. Uh, so we're engaging in mutually beneficial exchange. Uh, trade is not combat. It's, it's exchange. And of course, there's negotiation and there's... Uh, you know, discussion in terms of specific points around that, but uh, but I think it, this is a more useful frame in which to think about trade as uh, is useful exchange. It's again, it's it's not just people in the U.S. that say this. I mean, there are people, especially on the Canadian left, who also take this very uh, competitive us versus them approach to trade, uh, and it's it's not helpful. It's not helpful because all people really care for is to have a stable economy, to have a good job, to be able to provide for their families, to send their kids to the university, and. Uh, um, and per perhaps take a vacation, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. a family vacation. That's all people really care for, mm -hmm. right? And all this 
noise and all of this fight that's mm -hmm. going on. It's really um, making people very concerned about what the, the future or the, what the economic future is going to be of our country. Mm -hmm. One of the things I would add to that is um, the, uh, th there's a lot of discussion about trade that makes it about something or not. Again, tr trade is about commerce, right? It's about mutually beneficial exchange. Some people make it about winning and losing. And what we've seen from some people in the, in the current Canadian government is mm -hmm. they talk about a progressive trade agenda, which is essentially trying to build into the trade deal commitments by the United States to make changes to areas of social policy in the United States. Uh, issues around indigenous rights, environment, women's rights. Um, look, these are not things that that uh, uh, you know. These are things that are that are social, domestic debates within the United States. Uh, trying to force the United States to change on some of these policy areas through trade is just it's just a recipe for uh, for, for for preventing our success in the trade negotiations. So we've said from the beginning. Uh, the focus shouldn't be on trying to use this as some sort of backhanded way of changing social policy in the United States. Rather, we should focus on Canadians, Canadian workers, the Canadian economy, and enter into a negotiation that protects our interests. Um, and, uh, and and we can have those social debates domestically, and they can Absolutely, have them in the United States. Yes, because Canadians have our values, and people in the United States they have their values. Yeah. And of course, we all care for social issues, mm -hmm. but we care about, about them differently than maybe yeah. how they would. So I agree with you that it's not a wise policy to couple them together because it would only cause more confusion. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Now, Canada has created a new cabinet position to help exporters look beyond the United States. Is this a good thing? Well, <laughs> when, when you... Uh, have a cabinet shuffle. Sometimes there's an effort to to brand, to express certain messages to the to the public, um, but then there may be a dissonance with what's actually happening happening practically. So we'll we'll see uh, what happens with the government's broader trade agenda. But ju just to put it in context, in the last conservative government, uh, we sought to preserve and protect the trading relationship with the United States, but we also uh, signed uh, trade deals with the European Union and with the Trans-Pacific Partnership area, which includes major economies in the Pacific region. Mm -hmm. Canada, U.S., and Mexico are all part of it, uh, but so is Japan, Australia, uh, New Zealand, um, other other major economies in that region. So, um, so so we we were in the process of of certainly doing that. Um, there, there was a lot of discussion about the prospects of free trade with India. I don't know where that's at now after the Prime Minister's trip there. But, but so, so this is, of course, important that we expand our number of, of uh, trading, uh, trading partners. We never had a Ministry of Trade diversification. It was, yes. it was, uh, it was part of what international trade did. And, and uh, so, you know, at, at the same time, um, we have those trading relationships now. We're in TPP. We're in. The agreement with the the EU, um, you know, it, the there are other trade negotiations to consider, uh, but uh, but a lot of them have a, a a much greater degree of complexity, or we're talking about much smaller economies. Uh, we desperately need to preserve that trading relationship with the United States, and uh, it would be a mistake to think that that the partnership with the U.S. is replaceable. It's not replaceable. Uh, there are other opportunities, but but we can't replace that relationship. All right, so what I'm hearing you say is that uh, when the Conservatives come to power, you would be working hard to make sure that this relationship with the United States of America is preserved while you're going to continue to work on expanding uh, markets elsewhere. Yeah, it's, it's not an either-or, yes. right? It's, it's certainly not an either-or. Um, but, but again, uh, the, the biggest work there, I mean, the, the, the agreements we sign in terms of, of TPP and EU, uh, we, we sign trade agreements with countries representing over 60% of the world's GDP. Mm -hmm. So, the, hey, there's, there's, there's other countries, there's other economies, there's other opportunities. Uh, you know, but uh, but in, in some cases there are sort of thorny issues around, in the case of China, sort of fundamental rule of law issues. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm optimistic about the possibility of a trade deal with India, but 
Um, but, but we do have very different economies with India, mm -hmm. uh, so that there's some there's some hard discussion to happen there. Um, but but the uh, again is it, it's not an either or. The United States, you know, we need that partnership, and and certainly worth exploring other partnerships. That's as well. right. And logistically, you know, United States is so close. Yeah. Right. And at the end of the day. Um, corporations and businesses, they're also looking at the bottom line, yeah. right? So the same goods, if they have to be shipped to India or China, are going to cost so much yeah. more, right? So that's, that's a good thing. Okay, what advice do you have for our foreign affairs minister? What would you like to tell her? Well, uh, I, I think uh, we want to be as supportive as possible of the government in terms of collaboration. Uh, the government, of course, needs to make the case about the importance of trade. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the one other, I think, very important point of differentiation, the United States is our partner. It's also a competitor. Mm -hmm. We want can, businesses, when they're making investment, they decide, are we investing in Canada or the U.S.? Uh, and and uh, they look at tax systems, regulatory systems. Uh, we know that Donald Trump wants to bring jobs from other countries and bring them to, to the United country, States. Yeah. Uh, but what's important for us is, is um, to, to try and, and pursue partnerships, but also to be willing to compete in terms of having low taxes, of a clear and fair regulatory system. Uh, and I know that's what, that's what conservatives at all levels are trying to pursue. Uh, but our, our federal liberal government, uh, they are uh, they're trying to impose a carbon tax. Uh, they are raising taxes across the board. Um, we had there are other aspects of the previous Liberal government here in Ontario. Their uh, so-called green agenda that, mm -hmm. that that drove up power prices and, and discouraged investment. So there, are, uh, we think about trade. We also need to think about how competitive is our economy. I think Canada can compete, uh, but we need to have that tax advantage. Uh, under the Conservatives, we had the lowest business tax rate in the G7, and that mattered in terms of job creation, in terms of investment here in Canada. Uh, and, uh, and and I would you know, the, the biggest advice I would give to, to the Liberal government on trade is, uh, if if you want to be competing with the United States uh, successfully, uh, you've got to think about the things that allow businesses to to to. to survive and thrive and create jobs here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Now there are a lot of people who are like um, worried about when they see all this political posturing on on both sides of, uh, of the border, you know, Canadians are doing there and the United States government is doing its bit. Um, in all of this big noise, all people really want to hear is how is this going to impact my life? Mm -hmm. So what would you like to tell people to allay their fears that um, things are going to be okay and what is it that needs to be done to make sure that um, you know, uh, their lives are not going to be adversely impacted? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would say this, it is in Canada's best interest to have a deal. It's in the United States' best interest to have a deal. Uh, when there is trade conflict, it, it, it hurts both countries. And that should mean that both countries have a reason to try and work together. Uh, and we have a desire in Canada to work together across party lines to try and, 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 and get this done. Uh, in the process of that, we need to uh, be aware of the impacts of, of this, uh, the imposition of tariffs and, and how that impacts Canadian businesses. I think the most important thing is that as we do that, we need to take steps to make our economy more competitive. Uh, that means cutting taxes. Uh, that means not imposing arduous uh, new regulations. Uh, that means establishing the conditions where people want to invest here in Canada. Uh, and, uh, it, and I think if, if that's the road we fall, thinking about trying to pursue that partnership across party lines and across borders, but also also being aware of the need for Canada's economy to be competitive. I think that will allow us to succeed and, and continue to be the prosperous country uh, that we've been in the, in the past. But we, we can't take that prosperity for granted. That's right? right. We can't presume that things will necessarily be the way they've been uh, in the past. We need to, to uh, remember the kinds of policies that in the past have made us successful, a commitment to free trade, uh, a commitment to a, a low tax, uh, responsible regulatory environment that uh, that allows people to start businesses and, and be employed and 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 
take care of their families. All right. So there you go. Um, as you've heard, um, uh, Mr. Janis say that this is a, a very, very important uh, topic and a very important conversation that needs to take, take place across the board. And it's not a partisan issue. It is something that all parties are working together to make it happen because they care for you as a Canadian. 